Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and a welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? How are you doing? You know, today's session uh today's session i wanted to come live and talk about certain things that are happening not only around the world but what's happening lately with my clientele and uh, it's not that sharing about um, each individual client of mine but the just of what has been coming up first and foremost uh, if we can take a moment and be mindful of what is happening around the world especially uh, around syria and uh, with the earthquake so many are hurting so many are under the rebels of the earthquake and all the damage and when we think about it where you are right here right now if you could take a moment and just say thank you thank you to where you are presently Thank you to perhaps your surrounding, your loved ones. And thank you and gratefulness to if you feel safe where you are, in your room, in your office, in your home, especially in your body, and knowing that there is so much that is happening around the world, maybe in the vicinity of your neighborhood, your city, your county, and yes around the world globally if we can take this moment and just send a moment of hope a moment of grace and just our heartfelt love and i think that is the most beautiful thing if we can just connect and do so uh, today's message is very short very poignant and this is why i wanted to talk about this is because i just celebrated my birthday last week and uh, i didn't do a big deal about it why because um, my lovely loving uncle passed away and the reason i'm saying that is because in our culture in the armenian culture when something like this happens especially even when we are expecting it even when it is expected he lived a great life and uh, he was 98 years old and bless his soul when we think about it it doesn't matter if they are older or young it is um how we um uh, how we embrace uh death how we embrace hardship how we embrace illness and difficult times so today's message is how do you manage yourself and how do you cope with such um such things and what can you do so here are some tools and techniques for you um how i managed it was I can say I'm a little bit more pragmatic and especially when it is such an older age and uh, I can say he uh, he died two months prior to his 98th birthday and that's why I'm saying he lived a good life he was a prominent person and I want to dedicate this moment to our family that we come from togetherness and uh, celebrating life and mourning in our own way and i have realized every culture has their own way of coping and just this month i've had a few clients who have come and they're going through their own difficult times with um coping of their own with traumas and dramas and the illness 
uh, of their family members. And I want to say the number one stressor in life, in most lives, is the illness and the unhealthy or the well-being of their loved ones. When someone that you love, you care for, when they are sick, it creates a stress on not only uh, you as a person or your family members and everything else. The number two is money. That's what it's been said. So number one stressor in life is the health of a loved one. Number two is money issues. Number three is the health of self, self-health. So it's amazing how other people's well-being makes, um, has more impact on our health than, than our own. And number two is money issues, right? So when I thought about this and I was like, both of them are external stressors. So how is it that we internalize external stressors? And today I want to give you tools and techniques of how to manage it. And how to manage it is here's few, here's few techniques for you. Hello, my dear. Number one, I want you to prioritize self-care. And when you are Prioritizing self-care, that means um, become more centered, more focused as what's going on. And are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting enough nutrition and nourishment? Because if you are not taking care of you and stress from the outside, which is an external thing, is impacting you more, because when you feel anxious, when you go into fear mode, when you go into the fight and flight, I want you to realize it is harder for you to feel centered and more imbalanced to cope and deal and manage anything externally. And that can be due to illness or to money issues. It doesn't matter. Those are the top two that affect you internally. Okay, so start from the inside to help the outside. And are you able to go for a walk? Take few moments, just few moments of self-care, okay? Even if you have to walk around the house, walk around the room, if uh, your loved one is inside the room, um, one of the th things that happen when we feel un when you feel that what you have to say is not being heard, that you your opinions are not being valued, or you think that you are being this, you know what happens? Not only you get internal anxiety and resentment, but you start becoming, yes, resentful, angry but it's like this boiling water that it's very gently being simmered and the effects of that is that you start either crying or most people go into being loud screaming yelling or talking on a higher note so in order to manage all that, I want you to manage internally. When you feel centered and you value yourself and you can be on a more calmer way to have more control, it's easier to be in harmony. So take a walk and self-care. Take a minute to make sure that you include some element of self-care for yourself. Number two, I want you to seek out caregivers or support system to help you with loved ones or uh, managing their illness. Yes, doctors are there. Doctors do that. Nurses are there. Uh, so when you think about that, um, hospitals have um, 
caregivers, there's social workers. Uh, if there's family members, maybe you can reach out and ask if they can help you uh, either part-time. And one of the things I can say is I know you can do it. You may know you can do it. But when you take on doing so much, what you think that I can handle this, I don't need to burden anyone. I can handle this. I don't want to put it on somebody else because they may not be able to handle it. And that's called the emotional weight that you also take on. Because when you ask for help, there is more people wanting to help than you believe. And everybody wants to help. Even if it is the smallest little thing and you say, I can't go to the store, would you please just do something for me? If you could just grab that, or if you could just sit here and be with me for one hour so I can take a shower without being worried. So self-care comes from sleeping enough, eating enough, uh, taking that few moments under the shower just to drop and let go, right? And it's more hygiene. I knew of someone that was next to their loved one for three days in a row and was not taking care of themselves. Well, that in itself, I know sometimes you say, I can't leave, but what is the worst thing that can happen? And that's one of the things I talk to my clients about. When you are here, anything can happen. When you're in the bathroom, anything can happen. When you're at work, anything can happen. So we cannot be everywhere at all times. And you can't. There is no way you can be 24 seven awake and attentive because the shoe is going to drop and I rather it's not yours. So self care comes number one, um, ask for help. Number two, number three, do something that brightens your day. Even if it is the smallest little thing, or maybe you can ask someone to do it, or maybe if you reach out and just put one flower next to your bedside or your family members bedside something that it's uh, puts a smile on your face it's a figurine it's a stuffed animal something that is brightening your day and number four is take control Take control and reach out. There's coaches, there's therapists. Um, I am here. So those are the things that I ask because when it hits to fight and flight and you fear what's going to happen next, that fear factor in itself is going to start creating more anxiety and then you have to cope with the anxiety factor instead of the fear which is the cause of it so the work that i do with my clients when they get here is already at heart palpitation terpidation um, their blood pressure is up they're in fear factor they're having anxiety attacks and all we have to do is I know it's an emotional thing, but when you become more centered and you put the emotions aside to be more in control, then you realize you can cope and deal with things so much better. So I can give you this gift. If you text relax, the word relax to 818-221-2797, by all means, you will receive one of my audio recordings so that you can listen, download it to your phone, listen to it, and just relax for a few moments. So you are more stable physically, mentally, emotionally, consciously, and 
unconsciously, subconsciously, that when you are more relaxed, every nerve and every muscle, every organ is more in harmony, then you can cope and do things more and far greater and better. Now, here's other tools. I want you to know your triggers. Um, I may not be as a first responder at a hospital, but I have been trained as a first responder that the moment something like that happens, if there is a triage, if I see it, emotion is out the door. It's what we can do at that moment, how we can take care of things. Okay. So that's exactly what's happening during earthquake. Everybody comes together. First responders go there and they go there to do a job. There is no emotions, although things they see, they hear impacts them, but it's understanding at this moment, we put everything aside to deal and cope with this. Okay. So number two is you can separate yourself from the situation. If you have someone who's in the house, in the hospital, when you go for a walk, when you go outside, you talk to a friend, you are separating yourself from that immediate situation ASAP. What we call in the work that I do in the world of hypnotherapy and stress management, we call it transference. That means I'm transferring my emotions and my stress level from here to another place, even if it is very slight. And I'm going to give you another tool that is going to help you. The next one is find grounding techniques like my audio recording. As I said, if you uh, text relax, the word relax to 818-221-2797, that's one other tool. So you can ground yourself, listen to that state of relaxation, go into a state of relaxation, sitting somewhere, just waiting. If you are sitting next to your loved one, they are sick, you can just relax yourself while you're present. Okay. So that in itself and visualize, this is one of the greatest gifts that we have. It's an internal medicine. It's an internal gift. It's an internal thing that we have it. We're not using it as much. And here's one of them. You have the gift of healing. Your body knows how to heal, when to heal, when it's right. Okay. So visualize and send this vibration and this energy of like light of healing. Some people pray, some people do Reiki energy work. And all you have to do is just ground yourself, not only heal and strengthen yourself. If you have your own pain, send love and just healing, just visualizing the color of vibrating light and sun and brightness to where it is painful. And if there is throbbing, if it is palpitation, if it is stressor, which is red and vibrating on a higher level, just like the flames of the fire, just imagine light and blue and light and calm and green and blue, because what is blue? It is calmness. It is the sky. It is the ocean. It is clarity. It is cleansing. So just imagine this vibration of light, sunny, bright, and blue. Bright, sunny, blue. Even just this visualization and you send it vibrating to the person who is maybe agitated sick, coughing, realize you can do this practice, even if it is three minutes of nonstop sending this vibration three minutes at a time, because three minutes of focused attention is very poignant. That will help. 
The next one is let it be. Life, living, illness, love, joy, sadness. And those are all emotions in our life. Birthing, death. And realize that this is reality. And when you come to feel connected, grounded, you can cope much easier and more with love. So here is the most profound technique. You know, everything I do is in threes. So as I do the evoke, embrace, evolve, I want you to have this three techniques as well. When you feel anxious, when you are fearful, when you are in that state of a panic, ground yourself for just a minute, okay? For 30 seconds, look around three times. Look around and name three things. Look around, name three things. I'm looking and I'm looking and it's my bottle of water and I am seeing this camera camera and I look over there I see another plant which is my uh, uh, tulips so I see plant flowers my bottle of water camera okay and then be focused name three things you hear okay could be the sound of my voice I hear the very sound the very hint of a send, uh, sound of the AC, the heater, right? And then I hear the ticking of my clock. Three sounds. So three things you name, three sounds. And the last thing is move three parts of your body. I speak with my hands. You can move your head, move your eyes, move your fingers, or you can move your legs, move three things. That in itself, as I said, it's in a way a transference. You are transferring one from that impact, anxiety, anger, frustration, fear factor, panic and anxiety to three things that it's alive and makes you aware and present to where you are. Hi, Moshe. Hi, Patty. Thank you. Hi, Rubina John. Thank you for being here. Hello, Edith. So becoming aware is the number one. What we do, what I just help you do is evoke what was, which is evoking what is happening internally. When you suppress it, you go into this denial, it will be suppressed much longer and it takes so much harder to deal with things that what did you do you suppressed you just you, i don't want to deal with it right so number one evoke it number two embrace it embrace the reality of what is happening someone is sick yes they are what can we do about it okay and number three it's time to evolve. That means let's find the solutions. We can always find how to resolve things when we are more centered. So those were my tools and techniques today. And uh, always remember, things do happen in threes, but you also have three tools to manage it. Hello and thank you. You are so welcome. Uh, loss of my husband was devastating. I know, Patty, and today being your birthday, I want you to celebrate life. And you know, you say the loss of your husband was devastating, but when you have the tools you have overcome, breakups, loss, it is not a loss. He died. That's the reality. It was his time to go. And when you come to heal and remember this, you know this work, 
more than anyone else. Yes, we miss them. When we cry, we cry for ourselves because they are not here with us. But the most beautiful thing is the years that you spent with your loved one. So what if we start cherishing, cherishing moments, cherishing experiences, cherishing people, friends, loved ones, lovers, and who we are, even cherishing the things that makes you smile at this very moment because when you consider loss i consider it's reality and with that we will as you will continue in mind, in body, and in soul, in spirit, keeping them in your heart and knowing them. They're not gone. They're just not on this earth with us. I miss my dad. I miss my grandma. I miss a very good soul that was a big part of my life. But you know, I miss them and I keep them here. And when I think about it, I also realize, even with my dad, with my grandmother, not everything was perfection. They were not perfect. Our relationship was not always perfect. That's the reality. But we miss them. And so keep the three, the three tools and techniques at all times and you will realize when you evoke it and become real and when you embrace all of this so that you can evolve knowing they are always with you we come to celebrate life and with that i thank you all for being here today next week we're going to celebrate valentine's and say I love you in many ways and I will have three ways of that so until next week I bid you goodbye and thank you for being here God bless you and may the universal light surround you bye bye thank you for being here if you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got click right here but if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here.